You're taking it on at such a speed. These images are coming at you. They imprint on you the way that a memory does, a real life experience. The moving image has so much power in it. I did not grow up on films at all. I grew up in very small town USA. My parents were not film lovers. Um, my mom watched a lot of TV, a lot of soap operas. I really grew up more in 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 that realm. That those would be my influences. Um, when I was younger, with the soap opera influence, um, was not about me wanting to create soap operas. I wanted to be in them. <laughs> I wanted to act in them and, and be in that fantasy world. And I used to create my own fantasy worlds uh, when I would go outside and play and they would be kind of rooted in the soap opera worlds that my mother would watch. So, um, so I did not grow up on film at all. So I didn't have all of these early influences and all and, and directors and and a and the magic of wa of sitting inside a theater. And I didn't have that. And I'm kind of only now starting to experience that, experience that, or in you know recent years, maybe in the last five to ten years, as I became a filmmaker, I started falling in love with film alongside that, really. Um, but I do remember seeing uh, the film Waiting to Exhale. <laughs> uh, and I wasn't supposed, I was like way too young to be seeing this film. Like you were not, <laughs> you know, I think it was like rated R. I definitely wasn't 17. I remember being in the theater, watching it, and actually being really offended by it. And I think, um, that was partially because I had never seen anything that w that dealt with black women and sex and relationships. And there was, to me, so much sex in the film, <laughs> uh, which is partly why I was like sneaking to see it. But also, I also felt like it was so, um, I just remember being offended by it. And I, I still can't quite put my finger on what it was I was offended about because when I saw the film again, 10 years later, um, I didn't have, I had a very different reaction to it, probably because I had been through relationships and I wasn't too young to see the film. Um, but that did leave an imprint on me as far as how we take care of black women in relationships, in movies, having sex, dealing with those things, intimacy. Um, it definitely left an impression on me that this was uh, a place, once I started making films, this was a place of importance, a place um, to be responsible for. And yeah, that's the, really the one film going experience because my parents, again, they, they never took me to films. We didn't watch, we might watch, you know, the movie of the week. That was the closest thing that I had. Um, and for that, you know, I have a deep love for television. I'm very much influenced in the visual art space. So um, there's an artist, uh, she passed away uh, this past December, named Nicola L., Nicola Lautenberg. And she worked a lot in um, uh, what is it, a functional art uh, as well as conceptual art. She also made films. Um, very political, kind of the like second wave of feminism uh, came up under uh, Nikki St. Defal, uh, came up under the 60s where it was like, you know, women definitely were not breaking through as artists. A lot of them, you know, uh, came came to popularity more in the early 2000s. So <laughs> yeah, like a 40 years later, had been creating these massive bodies of work. Um, Louise Bourgeois, Carrie Mae Weems. Um, these are, you know, really strong feminist point of view uh, women who were creating from trauma, um, different types of trauma that has that's really moved me uh, that have been in the installation space which I'm which I work in and which I uh, has informed a lot of my work um, yeah they're very much rooted in kind of the visual art space photography sculpture and 
installation work is to me, it's like building, you know, these massive imaginative playgrounds, which are like sets, you know, and I can imagine so many worlds in there. And for me, filmmaking, I love to coincide the work that I do with a large scale installation or, you know, with a public art piece that can be, uh, where the public can interact with the work. I like taking it into that dimension as well. It's the first time I saw Louise Bourgeois, her, the installations where she would recreate the, the rooms and have different um, hanging pieces of clothing. I was like, oh, this is exactly what, I, I didn't know that that, that that was a thing. You know, I didn't know, I had dreams of doing things like that, but. Did, again, because I was not raised in the arts, my parents were not, my mother was very crafty and creative and probably a closeted artist. Um, but you know, my parents who raised me, they, um, we never went to a museum. I had no exposure to these things, but they lived in me somehow. And then once I started to discover them, I was like, oh, it's like these artists kind of gave me permission that what was going on in my head wasn't this kind of wacky thing. It was actual real, this is a real thing. This is called a practice, you know, and this is called an expression. And you, Numa, are called an artist, you know? <laughs> All of those things I, I did not know. I would have never called myself that, even though I was acting and writing from from a very young age, so. Hmm, I realized it at the age of, I would say 22, 23, that filmmaking was something that I'm passionate about. Um, again, I didn't grow up with it, but I always loved images since I was very young. I would uh, collect images from Magazines, if I saw a very striking image, I would tear out the, <laughs> the page. Sometimes I would sneak because I'd be in the doctor's office or at the dentist. And if I saw something in a magazine I like, I would tear it out. And I co quietly was collecting images and quietly building an aesthetic that way. I didn't know that that's what I was doing, but was always very drawn to that. And my good friend, Arthur Jaffa, uh, when we met and I saw he, he had uh, dozens of booklets, just like my little one that I had, uh, where he was collecting images and kind of um, making these almost like esoteric <laughs> scrapbooks with just things that he was drawn to or was examining. And I was doing the same thing in my own little quiet way. And that led me to photography. Uh, I got my first camera when I think I was 19 or 20, started experimenting with that. And then they started coming out with cameras that also did moving images. And so I started experimenting with that. And through my acting class, we were always filming ourselves, um, filming monologues so that we could send them to directors and casting people. And so it was kind of this very backdoor way that I came around to filmmaking. But once I realized that it brings together everything that I have a passion for, a passion for images, passion for writing, a passion for uh, creating worlds, a passion for reconstructing my life, I said, oh, I, I'm a filmmaker, <laughs> you know, like this is a real part of who I am and what I can do and this brings together all those worlds. And yeah, I was about 22, 23, so <laughs> it got real, really fast. And then I was like, and then I just really dove in to it. Shoot the rehearsal! <laughs> yeah, I would definitely am always passing on that advice. Like, shoot the rehearsal, but also really just make your films. You know, really, it's, it's such a just, like, demand, I guess, you know, that I'm trying to spread all the way around is uh, we, we need more films in the canon. We need more of a volume. We need, we need more things to archive, and it's going too slow and people need to make their films. It's just like find a way to get it done and don't be afraid, just do it because it is a practice, it's okay. You can always keep going. And um, 
with every filmmaker, whether they approach it as a practice or not, if you look at their body of work, it certainly has been a practice. You've seen the ebbs and flows of it. You've seen, you know, the rawness of their first films, you know, versus something that becomes more polished or more mainstream. And then you've seen them go backwards. And, you know, you, you just see how it formulates in that way. But none of that can happen if you're not practicing, if you're not making your films. So that's just, you know, just like get out of the idea that you're aspiring to do it or that you may eventually do it. It's like even if you're in school, you can still do it, you know, and um, yeah, just make your films. Yeah, we need more films. So one of my favorite places in the world to be is on set. I love showing up for actual production and I love the buzz. I love the early morningness of it, if it's that. Um, I love the excitement of, of every day, you know, going into getting it done. I, so I really love actual production and beyond that, I really love the edit as well. I love sitting in there um, and doing what I call the creative surgery, <laughs> you know, just getting under the hood and seeing what's been brought forth and then seeing where else you can take it, how you can form it. It, it is a form of sculpture to me as well. Um, sitting with it, going away from it, coming back to it, letting it fall on you again, I really enjoy that process. So yeah, actual production, because that's where the action is, and I love set, um, but also the, the edit, the quieter time, where it's just me and the editor or a small team uh, really getting in there, and it, it, it kind of, it almost takes on an intellectual pursuit in a way, you know? Uh, it feels very scholarly to me to just like, you know, start stripping it down and, and figuring that out, and I like that a lot. I've always been drawn to the form of a woman, you know, our bodies, our minds, everything that just goes into emerging as a woman, sustaining yourself as a woman, advancing yourself as a woman, that I've always been fascinated by that. And I can't really tell you why. I'm asking myself why a lot. Um, but it's just always really mattered to me, and I feel like it's part of my purpose is to contribute to what that is, you know, what to the conversation of that, to the imagery of that, um, you know, to to the films that need to exist more of that. And even though that's something that I feel like I arrived late to, um, I really didn't because I arrived really right on time as I, you know, emerged as a woman, and. Um, Everything from me as a young girl growing up has all contributed to that. So I've always, I've always been really interested in how people come in intimacy and how people come together, how people express love and, and how complex that can be and how people express their desires and their sexuality. I've just always been drawn, I've been drawn to that for a long time. And I think part of it is the work, that, the cam girling work that I did very early uh, into becoming a woman. I think that had me trying to understand that has had a really strong effect on my artistry. As much as I tried to put away that aspect of doing the sex work when I did and think that, oh, now I'm moving to Los Angeles uh, to be in films and eventually I learned to make films as well, I didn't see the connection <laughs> at all until I started doing the work and then bringing that into being my first feature film it all makes sense now. And so, yeah, I'm drawn to it based on the experiences that I've had and also kind of this unknowable reason because I feel like that's just all, it's always been part of me. It's like that's, I'm supposed to contribute to that. So here I am and the films shall come forth, you know, <laughs> so. It's, it's an honor to always, you know, be on a uni in, at a university talking about the work, uh, especially for me. I didn't attend a university. I went straight from high school to pretty much studying acting, studying voice, studying dance, and that led me to filmmaking. Um, 
So I missed out on this experience. And being on the other side of the experience, talking about the work, sometimes I feel like, oh, wow, I would have loved to be on the other side and have a filmmaker come in um, and many different types of filmmakers come in, show their work and have a chance for it to land on me in that way instead of trying to scurry to um, to research and learn about all of these incredible filmmakers that are existing now in the middle of my work, you know. Um, so I think it's really important to have these programs because otherwise you really just don't don't know. I really sometimes really wonder how I would have got to filmmaking. <laughs> I, you know, it was not from any environment. It was not from any schooling. So it, I, it's important that it exists um, because otherwise, how do you find your way? You know, it, it's more challenging for sure. And it may come for you later um, than, than you thought. I think it's amazing because I have an eight year old daughter and she's exposed to all of it now. You know, whether she wants to do that or not doesn't matter. She has the opportunity. She knows that it exists. She has um, the example of a woman, a black woman doing this. I didn't even know what a director was. You know, like there was no even, um, there was no example of what a director even was. And if I had been looking for it, I would have only seen one very specific type of thing, a white man, 99 out of 100 times. Um, so yeah, just I think that's part of the reason I kind of came to it in a circular way, um, because there were no examples. But now there are. The, a lot of these programs didn't exist even 10 years ago. There was no like directing for, for women programs that did not exist. And that kind of connects back to make your films, because the more films we have, for better or worse, the more that we can look at this, we can examine it, we can have that example um, for people to step into it. So.